Good morning all you amazing fishing freaks. Welcome all back to the channel. We are here on the water. Just got to give her a dang good rod. I woke up this morning. I said this is an absolutely gorgeous day. I have no idea what is going to happen today. Fishing wise, I don't have a plan in my head. I just know that I need to be on the water. And so that's what we're doing here. And that's one of the things I love about fishing. That's probably the best thing about fishing. You never know. You never know what is going to happen. You don't know what amazing thing you might catch or run into around the next corner. So I don't know. I don't know. I'm just carrying you guys along with me today. Uh, I was hoping to see a little bit of shad spawning near the boat ramp, but I have not. We're in that time of year where um, we're probably going to have a little bit of shad eating, morning shad eating, and then we'll have some um, some midday. It gets tough. It gets tough around the banks, and then there's some offshore things that could happen if you know where they are. We'll, uh, we'll leave it at that. I, I don't know the offshore things on this lake. I know that, that there are some, and I'd like to look for some. But I don't, I don't see any exploders over here, so I'm, I'm going to just idle out and see if we can find something, y'all. Thanks for hanging with me. Love that you're here. New merch available, googasquad.com. Crappie, Did that, or the sweet bass shorts, the bass in the pad shorts. Use my code LFG. Save on your terminal tackle, whatever you got to stock up on for summer. Bondo worms. Very sad thing. I just checked my boat and I don't have a single Mondo worm in it. Because I was like, it's probably time for the Mondo worms. Mondo worm season. I don't have a single one. Used them all up last year, so need to restock. Anyway, let's go see if we can figure out some bass. Maybe the crappie are loaded up. I don't know. Let's go have a good time on the water. See some shad getting pushed over there. I see a bunch of birds over here in these sharp shadows, shad shadows. I don't know, guys. I don't know what's gonna happen. I do know what is going to be thrown in this first 30 minutes, and that is a top water of some sort. I think I'm gonna start with a walking bait, which there's a new one. There's a new one coming here for the summer walker in you. The Texas two-step. This is the two-step. A little translucent color right there. So we'll we'll give that a whirl. I'm I'm actually disappointed. That I'm up this early and I'm not seeing like any bass explosions yet. Like I haven't seen anything get after a shad. There's dirt bass. Fish that just live in the dirt year-round. And then there's you got your deep bass. It's like the pubs and dims. They just go their separate ways. Sometimes they converge, but when things heat up, they make a choice. Do I go out deep or do I stay up shallow? My shallow bass or my deep bass? Okay, a little shad chaser. I'll take you. Come on. Kidding me? Okay, I am not liking these biscuits. These biscuits are stale, no butter. I want big, fresh, buttery biscuits. Fluffy. All right, yeah, this is not the jam. Something is happening somewhere. All right, we're gonna get a little crazy and try some tires with a swim bait and a, and a top water. Let's see if there's anything that'll come up in this deep, deep water. Crop 
be scanning. Never even thought to do that. Oh my god. Oh, that's a big carp. Jeez. <clears throat> Hate these carp, man. Should have brought my poker. Water clarity is not quite what. There's one. Oh god, that's a big one. Oh gosh, don't, don't jump. God, I got braid on here. Was not expecting that, y'all. God, what a way to start the day. This fish is gonna pull these hooks. Oh yeah, it's hooked in the side. It like unhooked itself and then rehooked itself. I can't believe these fish didn't pull these hooks already. <clears throat> oh, what a strong fish. Come here. God, this might be like a five. Just can't look, can't put much pressure on you. You got the full power with your mouth closed too. Oh no. This is not a good situation. But I got you. Holy crap, what a stud. <laughs> Actually he was not coming off. He hooked himself three ways to Sunday. That's that new two-step right there guys. Nice little walking bait. Real easy to work. Beautiful fish. Deserves a photo real quick. Put it in the well, get him some fresh. Woo! <laughs> you never know. You check these hooks. They're not been out. Guys, I love, I am in love with this combination things here this is the same rod I used uh, early spring same combo line size everything 40 pound braid with the green series reaction rod is green series a little softer than the gold and I don't know it just it, I just love the way it works and I've got that uh, that green series reel on there but just castability and just ease of working for the lipless and this I've discovered it's a hair long for working like I wish it was uh, maybe an inch shorter but it does get a little more distance on the cast but it's just perfect action so we have a uh, another topwater bait called the hound which I really like, but we've <laughs> we've probably received the most complaints about that bait because it's hard to work. And I agree, it is. You got to have the right setup to work it. This just out of the package walks really good. Walks really good. It's like your traditional spook that just goes boom, boom, boom to the side. Very easy for. Uh, somebody that's not used to walking baits to just take out of the package and start working and it also has a bigger bigger draw just louder wider more aggressive all right y'all one of the best topwater largemouth bass eats i've had all season had an awesome uh, awesome one on a popper just a few weeks ago but that one 
Oh my gosh, the fight on this fish was incredible. So we're gonna let it go, let it grow. See you, darling. Get back in there and bust those shad. Mm-hmm. Man, that fish alone is worth waking up for. Oh my God, hammered. Holy cow, hammered right there. God, I think jerked the rod. Oh, I see the bass. I see the bass following it. Not a giant, two and a half pounder. Oh my gosh. Mine just started moving right there. I've gotten two bites. A delicious topwater bite, and then I had a little doinker on a on a jig. I am going to meander in here into some shallows and just see if there's a frog eater. You know? See if there's any of those bass that have separated off from the herd they're just hanging around eating bluegill i'm sitting here just looking at birds there's some odd looking green barrel i don't know this could be like a derb bass housing i don't really know what it is uh, we're gonna fish around it and then uh see if we can get a frog bite up here in the stickolas and then i'm probably gonna go out to some deep water and do a little dragon see what we can come up with but y'all check out this fish house i don't i don't know how else to describe it it's a giant bucket, a barrel with a bunch of holes in it. And I don't think it's for planting tomatoes. Just a quick little check here. Okay, nobody wanna play? That's fine. We'll go to the deeps. I'm doing it. Switching gears. The next thing around the corner. The unexpected. And I'm looking for some bass brush piles. Fished a couple of them. I've stumbled upon some crappie, which I am not going to ignore. So a little eighth ounce jig head, electric chicken, bumping bug going on. See if we can bump a few of these crops. Take them home with a pan. Got him. Come here, buddy. Not that big. Sign of life. Absolutely killed it. Just had to sink it down there into the pile a little bit. God, there's a big object sitting on here. It's got to be a bass. It's either a bass or a three-pounder, three-pound crappie. Little guy. Man, you're gooey. Got a weird slime coat going on there, bud. See them now starting to come out on top of the pile. Oh, God. 
Dang, that was a good one. Oh, I watched him eat it too. I don't know what happened right there. Well, y'all, let's just say the fishing became not so good. It was very tough. Uh, once that little morning, you know, first hour, things kind of faded away. I had an uh, awesome top water bite. That was worth going. Then I had a, a good swim bait bite. Um, saw the fish, followed it, and then I did have a, a swim jig bite and ended up just uh, dumped the fish right at the boat. It was a little tiny one, but three bites and then I got some crappie, you know. I, I thought the brush piles and the rocks, offshore rock, that was going to pick up, uh, and it just did not. And I tried a couple other things, did a little dabbling, not happening. But today is a very important day in uh, in the treehouse life because uh we have to do we have to do some checking on these eggs so i actually miscalculated a little bit eggs eggs hatch at 21 days you know i'm trying to add a few to the coop here uh emmy did you know that we've got some eggs that are being sat on by uh barry white right now mm -hmm. and they're probably gonna hatch like the next couple days mm -hmm. i don't think we're prepared so Something that I have not done yet that I want to I want them to see because I'm really curious is um, AC units cutting on. Watch that trim. So what I haven't done yet is actually check the eggs with light and see how many of them have chicks in them. Let's see if this is gonna work. Barry White is actually out of her nest right now. Everybody wants to go out. Do your thing, yeah. There goes Barry White. There she goes. First of all, do we have all our eggs? It appears that we do. There's no snakes in here. Hey, just checking in. I'm just checking in. Don't worry about it. No, 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 no. I got some treats for you. I got some treats. We'll get you. We'll get you treated up. Set this right here. Obviously, she's pretty broody, so. Okay, I can definitely see something in there. There you go. Let's check on another egg. Oh, she's pecking me. Looking inside of the egg here. I saw a crack in it. Those are veins. Because there's a bird growing in there. Well, she's being a good sport about it, that's for sure. Let's check a blue egg. The bottom end is empty. I don't know what that means. I'm just hoping to see a bird in there. I'm sure you guys are going to let me know in the comments. Pretty much looking at the same thing on all these. Wasn't really quite sure what I was looking at in there. Just got on Google real quick, and it appears that those are fertilized eggs, and they are uh, about to pop, essentially. So, like three quarters of the egg is just full of dark mass. I'm sure if I came out here in the dark and put it under light and was really focused on it, you could probably see some more detail. But in the daylight, it's kind of hard to see. Point is, we definitely got fertilized eggs. At the time, we had both Colonel Sanders and Mr. Penny in there, so they were they were getting it done, let's just say. For those of y'all that don't know anything about chickens, let me just explain how amazing this situation is, okay? So you get some chickens, they get the eggs, you know, they get fertilized, the chickens go off, they lay their eggs, they get, they get in a clutch. The hen sits on the eggs for 21 days, keeps the temperature together. Even if they're laid in different days, they start developing on the day that she sits on all of them. She plucks her own feathers out so she can put her bare skin on it. 21 days later, they start hatching out and then she teaches them everything they need to know about where to find food, water, whatever thing is. Like it's, it's just all done by her. It's, it's incredible she only comes off that nest like a couple times a day to get a little drink 
and a little, uh, little bit of food. And she keeps a higher than normal temperature for 21 days to uh, the, the perfect temperature that the chicks need. It's just amazing. Chickens are amazing. Well, y'all, stay tuned for the hatch, I suppose. And I forgot to tell you about this at the beginning of the video, but there is a fishing Black Friday sale that is going on at GuggenSquad.com. So if you do want to get stocked up on your wigglies and jigglies, maybe pick up some hard baits, some, some of the threads, uh, you can do that. Biggest sales we've had all season long, plus 10% um, off using code LFG at checkout. Wanted to let you guys know that, so if you're wanting to get a rod or stock up on a bunch of baits, now's a good time to save some money. So check it out, use my code, and thank you guys for being here. I'll see you for another outdoor adventure next time.